And that's the basics of map and set out of the way. Let's have a look at how we can search using different ways of searching. First of all, however, before I do that, I'm going to write a little timer class because we're going to time things. And this will use what's known as the Chrono library of the standard library. It's got features for doing all sorts of time-related stuff. So I'm going to just create this timer and uh, I'll have a constructor. And in the private section, actually, I need some variables. You just want the da, 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 chrono. I'll need the headers for this. We need what's known as a time point. Uh, high resolution clock. Start. So this will be the start time point when we start the timing and it's complaining because we haven't got the headers so we need the chrono header oops chrono okay so in the constructor we get the current time the idea is to use this in what's known as an RAII mode which is resource acquisition is initialization you'll see why in a minute let me start using it so when the object is created, yeah, high resolution clock, yeah, we need a high resolution clock. And we get the, uh, the current time point and store it in this local private variable. In the destructor, when this object goes out of scope, because we'll create this on the stack, and a call function called stop. And stop does the, and it's complaining, stop will do the actual work of calculating how much time has elapsed so we get another end time point which is gonna be std chrono high resolution clock again now so now we know the time when this stopped I need to get the duration and, and do a bit of calculation to find out how much time in microseconds and milliseconds have elapsed. So what we do is we convert the time points are converted into a unit of time. So what we need is time point to cast. I'm going to cast it into STD chrono microseconds because computers are fast so we'll ne probably need that and start time point this is going to be too long let's um hang on to get a bit organized it's um yeah let's break this line up a bit so you can see what's going on um, really gonna help is it let's have a look right time point time since epoch count so what that is we're converting the time point into an actual time which would be a number of ticks since time began so that's what this since time epoch is and we get the number of ticks from that with the count member function got to do the same for the end point and then we subtract the two so I'll do that again, call that end and change this to end time point. So auto duration equals end minus start. That's all that is. And I believe the trouble with auto is it hides the type. It's a long, long, so it's a, a long, long integer. Double MS. So we're going to convert into milliseconds. So I just multiply by 0 0.01 and then we just output the result. So that's that. Start using it. Ooh, what's that? Why is that complaining? Start time point is unknown. Uh, there it is. Um, did I misspell it? Don't know why it's. Uh, that was weird. Intellisense, eh? Now, I'll use a set of integers, I think. So if I include a set, I'll need algorithm. So I'm going to use what's known as an algorithm from the standard library. There is a find algorithm, which is a non-member function. That's what algorithms usually are, are non-member functions, which you can use on any container. So in the main function, 
turn knot, I think. Frank says another error. Expected a curly brace. I must have a curly brace missing. Nope, I think it's potentially telling a porky pie there. Could be wrong. Saying a curly brace is missing. Just a minute. Yeah, that error here is a porky pie. It's not true because I've just done a sneaky build and it seems to be all right. Sometimes I get this with Visual Studio, some um, telesense it, um, error reporting. It doesn't always work well. So what we're going to do is going to create a local, couple of local scopes. Now, uh, first of all, let's create um, the set of type int, uh, int set I'll call it. And I'm going to put a million integers into this. So I'm going to have to use a for loop. So 0 to 9, uh, 999,999 is a million. Less than equals actually. Otherwise it will be one short. That would make much difference. So set dot insert x. Not set. Int set. That's got a million integers in it. Now in this local scope we're going to create a timer. Called T. That'll take the current time. And when it hits this brace, it will calculate the end time and, and the duration. Well, what we do then is auto x equals. I'm going to use this, the the um, non-member version of find and uh, int set dot begin int set dot end. I'm going to look for one two three one two three. So this will just search through the set sequentially, not taking advantage of any of its special sorting features. I shall put up an informative message, I think. Actually, I'll take that out. Catch it and put it in at the end. Um, yeah, go here with it. Right, so it's that. If we do this again. function in there that is equal to int set dot find two three one two three just wrong bracket and just do a the end uh, there w count cd end out so I've got two ways of searching. In fact, I'm going to duplicate this. So we put two card returns on to separate the two. It becomes one block of text. So we're going to use the standard find, which you can use on, in fact, I think you have to use on sequential containers like vector and list. They can use on any container, but we'll see that this is not the right one to use for maps and sets. You'll see the amount of time is a large difference between them. Let's press the F5 key and hope I don't get any build errors. The non-member function find took 163.3979 milliseconds or uh, what's that 163,379 microseconds whereas the member function only took 39 microseconds. The non-member function is 4,189 times slower than the member function version. I read somewhere once that in a tree with a million elements, the worst case scenario is that you'll only ever have to do 20 comparisons instead of a million, uh, as would be with a, a sequential container. So they're much more efficient for searching. So you've got large amounts of data and you don't care how they're stored in the container too much, then set a map are recommended. Also, map is useful if you want to map something to something else. And there are clever techniques you can use there, which we will be seeing some of those techniques when we do the game project. In particular, you can map strings like command strings to member function pointers or just function pointers to run the appropriate code depending upon the input command of, in a command processor. 
anyway that's it for this video